Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is morning here on this Thursday, May 11th. Welcome to Ask Ashley. This is our weekly live where I go live here on YouTube and answer your crochet business questions. We already have a couple coming in. So thank you, Paige, for your questions. We see you. You will be our very first one up and running this morning. How's your all's week going? What are you crocheting? Have you had any spring markets and how are they going for you? I've been seeing so much activity over on Instagram with people like selling their things. Hey, Nicole, how you doing? Ugh, I'm wearing my onesie again, but I checked my replays and I did not wear this last week, so it's fine. I wore it, I think, week before last, so it's no big deal. Okay, let's dive in over here to the questions and get started um, serving you well today. Paige says, I did my very first market last Saturday and it was so much fun. I'm preparing to open my Etsy, but I'm wondering if establishing my business as an LLC should be done first. So Paige, it's not required. You do not have to become an LLC in order to open an Etsy shop. You can open an Etsy shop with your social security number and you're good to go. So you do, I didn't, oh, I didn't become an LLC until late December, 2021. So I've been an LLC for a little over a year, like almost a year and a half. And I've been in business. I opened my Etsy shop in 2016. So plenty of time before you have to have to become an LLC. I became an LLC for tax purposes because I was paying out the hoo-ha for secure social security tax. And if I was an LLC, I would pay like half the amount of social security tax that I was previously paying. And I want to pay half of that so I can keep more of my money now instead of putting it into social security. So that is why I became an LLC. And that is how I understand it. And I'm not a tax professional. And if you have more tax questions or detailed tax questions, or, you know, just want to cross all your T's and dot all your I's, I would suggest reaching out to a tax professional. I am not a tax professional. Okay, just a little disclaimer. Next question, also from Paige. She is starting us off strong this morning. Thank you, Paige. She said, after my market, I realized there's a category in the $15 to $20 range I'm not meeting. Of your patterns, do you have a suggestion that's cute or practical that takes an hour, an hour and a half to make that she could charge in that range? I like this question, Paige. I am going to go to, I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> share. We are going to go to www.craftyconcept.com forward slash free patterns. Okay, so this one would be nice in the $15 to $20 range. This one was guest posted by my sweet friend. Is it Jess or was that a different one? Jess, there she is. Excellent. This is a brand new one that just went live on Friday. So this is a good one. Check that out. You could use any type of applique situation on there to make it be on brand for you and to fit your ideal customer well. We've got the gift pockets, Paige, is it Paige? Yes, that have been, I've been cranking out slowly but surely, I'll be getting out more of them, but these ones, um, 15 might be, 15 would be on the higher end of this of this price range, sorry. Oh, it's just a cat. Um, but I could see, I could see you probably doing that. The good news with these are they're reusable. So if you're, you could market them as a gift, a reusable gift pocket for holding small gifts or gifts cards. You can also, which I posted on Instagram yesterday, market them as keychains that you can attach to your diaper bag, your book bag, your kids' backpacks, your purse. Oh, imagine my outfit. Whatever it is that your ideal customer needs, you can market it as a keychain, and then they can hold things like cash. Um, like, like lunch money, not a bunch of cash that might be dangerous, but hand sanitizer, lipstick, chapstick, maybe even some lotion. If you've got a small enough thing, I mean, it can hold. So here's an essential oil roller goes in there. Ooh, no problem. We got a chapstick goes in there. No problem. Look, we got a lighter, whatever your ideal customer is into, you can market these things to them and let them know something specific they could put in there that is important to them. Boom, holding all the things. So very fun, very neat. And these I'll be cranking out more patterns as I go. Look, we can hook on this little yarn babe keychain. Go hook that on, Taylor gave me this. Have a little keychain situation, very cute. 
So that's something to think about as well, Paige. And then we have, this is a baby rattle that was guest posted. These have been showing up all over my Instagram. Like everybody are loving these. These are by Corey of Two Little Knots. There she is. These work up really fast. They use blanket yarn, throw a rattle in there, a small amount of polyfill, and you've got yourself a little daisy rattle. These are doing really well. Daisies and flowers are all over right now, spring, and people are also turning them into like little wands. They're putting them on like small little dowel rods and hanging some pretty ribbon from them. And they're like little flower daisy wands. And kids are like kids, if you have like a vase of those or a little a basket of all these little different flower wands, that's gonna grab the attention. You could hang like a bell from it. So it's like a little ding ding, you know, kids would love that, especially at markets because if they can grab something and play with it immediately, they're going to want to buy it. They're going to want their parents to buy it for them. So that would definitely be something in the $15 to $20 range. And then, oh, why are we all the way down here? And we have, let's see, this little guy probably could be marketed in that range. This little guy, 15 might be a little high for him, uh, but you could probably get away with it. These And these are the things that work up really, really quickly. Um, then we got some Christmas stuff. Bitty kitty bags. That could probably take you an hour and a half once you get the hang of it. That could probably, and I would probably charge 15 to 20 for those. Um, also, if you would charge different, it's no big deal. Everybody's is different. Everybody is right. It's no big deal. Uh, let's see. Rainbow bags. That one would work up fairly quickly. These little sea animals are made on the 22 knitting machine. Uh, they would also make super cute keychains. Kids love little um, animal keychains. We love them when I was in school and Ava loves them now. So if they're like timeless, kids are always going to love these things. Uh, bookmarks, 15. You could probably do 15. Uh, this little guy works up really fast. This is guest posted by Miranda of Crazy for Crochet Mama. These would be eye catchers at a market as well. You can do a hamster like this, or you can make the ears look like a bunny. Um, you could probably make them pointy and add some whiskers and make it look like a kitty cat. Like the options are endless with this little guy. Super duper cute. And then we have plant things like paint, plant pot, plant like cozies. It's just the yellow part. And then you can put a fake plant in there, a crocheted plant or a real plant. So this is what it looks like in real life. So all you're making is this part. This would be very, very quick. You could do different colors. Obviously with it yellow like this, it kind of resembles a pineapple, but you could do different colors and it'd just be a fun textured little plant, plant cozy. Um, this is a keychain. works up fairly quickly. Um, maybe a little bit, a little bit tedious of stuff, but it's not too bad. And the, the more you make them, the faster you'll get. Uh, watermelon baby rattles and also have rainbow baby rattles if you ch sell children's things. Um, this would probably be a little bit longer in time. This one's really, I, I would say that would probably be like a one to three hour project. So probably, probably a little bit longer. Bitty boho bags work up super fast. If you, if you are looking for kids things, this one would probably work up super fast. It is a coaster for a plant. So a rainbow plant coaster that was guest posted by a lovely friend. Um, this is a keychain that's made using the knit stitch that was guest posted by my friend Nate Dean. These work up super fast. This would be a good one to use. Claire Cozy's. I get my tags from Angie and Britt. $15 to $20 I think is a good range. Probably $15 is what I would sell those for. Uh, I might even sell mine for $12. Um, but I think you could get away with $15. Um, this is a little cozy to hold hand sanitizer, the kind that has the little squirty tippy, not like the cute ones from uh, Bath and Body Works, but like the OG looking ones. Uh, these little headbands work up in probably 15 minutes, maybe less. There's no tails to sew in or nothing other than like after you tie it off, you could sew them in or you could just knot it and leave it in the back or you could just hide them on the inside. Super simple, super fast. It's made on the 22 Addy. Uh, these ones take three days. <laughs> I love her so much. I wish she didn't take so long. I have a big one hanging out with me. Oh, oh, see her hanging out back there. I was practicing taking pictures of her with my new camera. I got a new camera. Got a new camera. Been practicing. And she's wearing my old glasses that Tilly chewed up. Isn't she cute? <laughs> 
little little thing. She won't sit up now. I had to probably, I mean, she might. I had to, okay. And then what else we got? Baby Bitty Boho bibs. If you sell baby things, those would work up really quickly. You can make them with or without the fringe. $15 would be perfect for those. Um, Christmas time, these little mini stockings work up great. They sell well. People love them. Oh, bubble bugs. These would be excellent. Um, Actually, they would not be, need to be $15. These would be the $5 to $10 range, depending upon how fast you can crank them out and like what types of eyes you use and stuff. But if you're looking for something a little bit cheaper to add, if you have random furry yarn in your stash, like I have a whole bunch of Spinella that has been discontinued, but I have a ton of it because I hoarded it because I love it so much. And they were discontinuing it. And I was like, please don't. And they're like cakes. So there's a ton of colors all mixed in. You can make so many different bubble bugs with just a small amount of furry yarn. I like the furry, but I have a blog post of different types of yarns that you can use as well. This one right here was a yarn experiment where I made it with a bunch of different yarns just to try it out. So you could definitely check out all of that if you wanted to. Um, there's the rainbow rattles. Those would work up within your time range. All the earrings would work up. Uh, you could probably sell earrings. Maybe these ones you could sell. These and the rainbows for $15. Might be a little high. Um, these ones you could get away with like 8 to 10 because maybe 8 to 12 because they work up in less than 30 minutes. That is my favorite pattern. You can also make this pattern into a keychain just by putting one of the key ring things. Not this big plastic piece, but this little metal piece through the loop, the main loop of the earring. And then they make a super cute, quick, easy keychain that you could sell really cheaply if you needed like something by your register or something like that. You could sell those for three dollars. Uh, mini donut keychains also way cheaper than 15. You probably sell those five to ten dollars. Uh, pumpkin rattles would be fun for fall markets. Those would work up really fast. And that is all. So good question, Paige. I hope you got some good ideas. Let me pop back over to the comments and see if anybody hanging out. Plant coasters, cute. So cute. Thank you for all the prices. Thank you for saying all the prices are right. I make a specialty item that I charge $100 and up. Yeah, absolutely. So if you've watched any of my lives um, or listened to any of my like posts where I talk about pricing. Pricing is different for everybody. It's going to depend on your why, your ideal customer, and your ideal level of success. If you struggle with mental health issues and crochet keeps you sane and you just want to make your yarn money back so you can keep crocheting so you don't want to pull your hair out or, um, you know, claw at the walls, claw at the walls, and you charge $5 a beanie because that makes you happy and you're able to get your money back and you're able to stay sane, then you do that. And if someone says to you, you're belittling the rest of us, you're you're bringing down the rest of us. No, no, they're not. Because the person who buys a $5 beanie is not the person that buys a, a, a $25 or a $30 beanie. It's totally fine. Also, um, if you buy, if you sell thirty-five dollar beanies, and somebody says, somebody says, "Oh, these are so expensive," that's not your customer. If you want to sell thirty-five dollar beanies, that's going to speak to your why and your ideal customer. Your ideal customer is going to want a thirty-five dollar beanie. Your ideal customer is going to see a five dollar beanie, and she's going to be like, mm, "Something's wrong with that." She's not going to say it out loud. She's going to be polite, but she's going to be like, in her mind, she's going to think five dollars equals bad quality. So she's going to want the $35 beanie. There's a million different customers. You are a unique person. Your prices will reflect you, your ideal level of success, and your ideal customer's season of life. If you are selling to college students, your prices are going to be cheaper than if you are selling to stay-at-home moms with husbands who make six figures. Okay? That's just how it is. So pricing is different for everybody. Everybody is right. Listen to the market. Pay attention to your ideal customer. Do some trial and error and never lower your prices. Start low, go up as necessary. If you start high and then lower them, everyone who paid the high price, you're going to be spitting in their face. And everyone who saw the high price but didn't pay for it is going to say, wow, she doesn't even value her own work. So why should I purchase from her? So lowering sets horrible psychology. Don't do that. If you can avoid it, if you've already done it, there's nothing you can do about it. Just move forward from here um, and take this little nugget of information for next time. But that is my quick little, my quick little tidbit on the pricing. Okay, let's go back to questions. Thank you, Paige. I appreciate you. Would what help with write-offs? Would it help with write-offs? 
getting an LLC, becoming an LLC, you can write off as a sole prop. You don't have to be an LLC to write off your tax things. Please speak to a tax professional. I am not a tax professional, but in my experience as a business owner, not a tax professional, you do not have to be an LLC to have write-offs. You have write-offs as a sole prop all day long. And a sole prop is, what I think that's like what you automatically are if you just start a business using your social security number. I believe you are a sole proprietor. I'm not a tax professional. I do not even research this stuff because it is not interesting to me. And I do not retain the information when I have to learn it. I learn it for that moment and then I let it go. So I'm not your tax gal, I promise. But in my experience, I write off every single thing possible and I've been doing it since 2016. And I didn't become an LLC until basically 2022. Daphne says, I want to open an Etsy shop this fall. I have two questions for you. One, how much would you charge per finished item to account for pattern cost? So we talked on pricing already. So hopefully I answered that for you. If you need me to go into detail anymore, just let me know. And then her second question is, would you recommend making a bunch of an item before opening and listing? So what I would recommend, Daphne, is making... So you're going to want to open your shop with more than one listing, right? The more listings you have, the more likely you, you're going to show up in searches. Also, it's just going to look better because it's not going to look like plain and empty. You're going to look more legit if you have a, a nice product line. I recommend listing every single one of your products by color. So if you sell five items, five different products, and each one is in eight different colors, you will have eight times five listings. And then you can also start bundling them together. And then you can have more than that. And then you can just start using different keyword phrases. And then you can have even more than that. So it's a whole thing. But I would recommend having a, a very specific, intentional product line. Everything in your product line should serve your ideal customer well. You should be raising her quality of life or solving a problem for her with every single one of your products. They should all be very specific to her in a very specific way. So if you are creating a shop where you sell baby girl things and you want to add baskets to your shop and you think, how can I market baskets to baby girl moms? Nursery organization, toy organization, make it idle customer specific, everything that you do. And then I would start posting your listings one a day. One a day until you get them all posted or even one every other day if you want to take a little bit longer because posting regular listings like that will tell Etsy that you are an active shop. So I do not recommend drafting 30 listings and then making them all live in one day. I know it's fun to offer like a grand opening experience for your idle customer and your audience on social media. And I get that and I did that with my shop and it, it worked really well for me. So it can work well, but it's smarter to list them a, one, at a, one a day or one every other day or a couple a day if you have like a whole bunch and you're just trying to get them listed because that's going to tell Etsy that you are an active shop. Um, so something to think about. Very good question. Thank you. Wow, that is all of them. Definitely going to make the earrings. Which ones, Paige? Which ones are your jam? The, the Crafty Loop earrings are dang fast and they're addictive. They are addictive, addicting. So if you make, just mentally prepared to make a hundred of them. Um, I know from experience because <laughs> I designed that on my way to vacation. And by the time I got home from vacation, I had made like 75 pairs, like two, two in a pair. There's a giant bumblebee outside. You're welcome, Paige. I'm glad you found it helpful. Thanks for being here and being active in the comments and asking questions and stuff. It makes it a whole lot more fun for me. Um, here, you're. Hey, your Claire Bambini is a huge hit for all the people I've made it for. Thank you from Australia. Well, thank you, Australia. So the Claire Bambini was the pattern that put me on the map. If you are new around here or haven't been here very long, my Claire Bambini went viral in December 2017, I think. December 2018. December 2018, maybe. Um, it was insane. I, nothing. I didn't make it go viral. A different Facebook group, a big, so Facebook groups used to be bigger than they are now. It used to be like a whole thing. But there was a Facebook group that had like hundreds of thousands of members. And what this person did that owned the group was share products all the time and because she's an affiliate marketer. So she still shares an affiliate link. And then when you buy through her affiliate link, she gets a small commission from the company, not me. I didn't give her a commission. Etsy gave her a commission. And she shared an affiliate link to my product because I posted a product that was trendy, seasonally appropriate, had gorgeous 
gorgeous photos, not because of me, a model, a friend of mine took this photo and gave it to me and I used it and it killed. It absolutely killed. It was stolen by every overseas company possible. They all stole the photo and they all used it because it was gorgeous. And I had stellar keywords. I did my keyword research. I knew what people were searching. So I did all of these things to set my listing up properly. It caught the eye of an affiliate marketer. Etsy has an affiliate program. So she got to post it with her affiliate link. She made money. I had 1,000 open orders. No, 1,000 orders that December. I don't remember the year. I think it was 2018. 1,000 orders. Some of them were for the pattern. So that was an automatic, I didn't have to fulfill that order. It automatically was fulfilled digitally. But some of them were for eight Claire Bun beanies. Like one order would be for eight Claire Bun beanies. It was absolutely insane. It was the most chaotic time of my life. And I have never loved anything more. Like I thrive in the chaos. If things are slow and steady, I do not do well. I drag my feet. But if things are chaotic, I am on like Donkey Kong. I don't know if that's the phrase. But it is, it is my time to shine. And I love chaos. I used to work for a textbook company in my town here. And we sold textbooks to college students. And so twice a year was crazy busy when new kids were coming in and when kids were coming back to sell their books. And that was my favorite time of year. I would work 60 to 80 hours a week. I was just there all day, every day, running like a crazy person, talking to like hundreds of students. It was the most fun of my life. It was the best job that I ever had besides owning my own business. Absolutely loved it. Um, I had another little thought. And now it's gone. Okay. Next question. Again from Paige. Paige, you are running this show today, friend. Thank you. Thank you. Paige says, how do you like to package them? And I assume you mean the earrings, but you might be talking about Claire Bun Beanies. Either way, I'm going to show you. So we're going to go back to sharing our screen. Uh, there we go. Share. Okay. Okay. And we're going to go to, I'm going to type in earrings. And I'm going to show you something, Paige. You're going to love this. How to make easy earring cards for packaging your handmade earrings, full tutorial. So you can make these fun little cards using card cardstock paper. I get the, all the materials are listed here. And I also share like all the earrings uh, for a free download of printable crafty loop earrings. Ta-da! Here's a printable. And there's a, a good idea of how you can market it. Um, so you can open this in your PDF thing and add your own, add your own images. And I have a link to show you how to do that as well. So you, here's a freebie that you can have. Oh, sorry. Share this tab. So sorry. Here it is. Here it is. So you can print this off by clicking on it. I don't even have to sign up to my email list. This is a very old blog post. Um, but if you click here, you get that PDF. You can print them out or you can make your own like this on using cardstock paper, stickers, stamps, handwriting things, whatever it is that you need to do. There's a full video tutorial to show you how to do that. And um, like all the materials and stuff, including the, uh, that's not, it's not there. There's a little, it might be listed in the YouTube video. Um, hang on. Might be listed right here. So, no, I need to, I need to add my little, this guy, this is the secret weapon. This will round out your corners. I need to add that, but it's just a corner corner cutter or something. Um, you can get them on Amazon. But there's there's the video for that. Share this tab instead. And then we also have um, every Wednesday, I send out a free pack of Handmade with Love wrap labels. So these are another way that you can package your products. I send these out every single Wednesday. They are seasonally appropriate. They are fun. They are exciting. There's a huge variety. They are free. If you are not on my email list, you can sign up to my email list. Going uh, Sierra will drop a link. It doesn't matter. You can sign up for the, the content calendar. Sierra, pop the content calendar link in there. And if you sign up for that link, you will get my content calendar and then you will start getting wrap labels every single Wednesday. They're fun and adorable. You can also sign up through any of my blog posts. Um, but this blog post gives you a few ways of how you can use them. You can put them on mason jars. You could put them, like you can package something up with tissue paper and wrap it around. You So that was a keychain that I did, a tiny little baby keychain. You can put them on little uh, gift boxes. If you make gift boxes out of cardstock, and I also have, a tutorial to show you how to make gift boxes out of cardstock. This is very old. These are very old blog posts, but I love them. And they, when I first started my business, I did this. I made my own gift boxes out of cardstock paper and I shipped my things out. Hang on, I gotta sneeze. It's gone. 
we're fine. Ugh. And but, so you can wrap them around little handmade boxes or you can get like little paper mache boxes from Hobby Lobby and wrap them around those and tape them on the back. You can, that needs to be removed. This blog post needs to be edited, Sierra. We need to edit this one. It's very old. Um, you can also, if you sell hand dyed yarn, you can wrap them around your yarn. You can wrap them around rolled up t-shirts if that's your jam. So many things that you could do uh, with these wrap labels. But the way I used them was I wrapped them around my Claire Bun beanies. It looked much like this, but I rolled my Claire Bun beanies and I wrapped them around. That's how I packaged every single Claire Bun beanie that went out of my door. And there was thousands. I think we've had over 13,000 linen Claire Bun beanies to date, like linen, just the one color, not to, not to mention all the other colors. Um, and I put wrap labels on every single one of them. Now you might be thinking, oh, I love the wrap labels. I wish I could put my logo on there. I'm so glad you asked. Go to my blog, typed in logos. I didn't mean to put the S there, but I did. So actually, let's try it. Let's type in logo. Let's try to find it. You're, this is going to blow your mind. Get excited. It's very old. Okay. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, okay, here we go. How to add your logo to a PDF, AKA wrap labels. So if you get a sheet of wrap labels and you wanna put your logo on them, this is how you can do that, is by following these instructions. This is on a Mac. Sierra, I will um, tag this one, sorry. I, I just realized you're probably running around like crazy trying to grab all these, <laughs> all these links. She just did it, you're the best. Um, I didn't give her a heads up. I didn't know we were gonna be doing this. So here we are. Um, but this will show you how to add your logo to any of my wrap labels. You put a white circle there. You cover. You put a white circle to cover up the text that's already there, and then you add in your own picture of your t of your logo, and then you plop it in the middle of the circle. Easy. Then you have your own branded wrap labels. I send these out every single week. Let's go and look at some of the wrap labels that I've sent. I'll show you some of them, and then we'll hop back over to questions. I'm going to share my screen in just a second. Trying to get to the right page first. And some of these probably haven't released yet. So you might be getting a little bit of a sneaky peeky here. Hang on, I can't even can't even find the wrap labels. I'm trying to find what they're they're called because they're all called something similar. Oh, well, we'll just, we'll just go from here. So share this tab instead. So here you can see, so here's some Daisy wrap labels that I've sent out. Share this tab instead. And you can cut these out and wrap them around your products. You get vertical, horizontal, vertical, I don't know. You get skinny, short is the word I'm looking for. You get long, and then you get matching thank you cards. And that goes with every single pack that I send out. Here's a cute one, the hat, or the houses. So you get short, long and matching thank you cards. And you can put a circle over these and then put your logo, turn it so it matches the right direction. We've sent out Halloween wraps before. Look at those. Very fun, very neat. They're all seasonally appropriate and really fun and a great way to like spice up your packaging. And I send these out every single week for free. Here's some rainbow ones that I sent out or will be sending out. Uh, 916. So these have already went out. Look at these little thank yous. So simple and so fun. People love them. I've been doing this for, I think, three years now. Let me see if I can find another one. I know I had, which one that fit floral? Oh, well, we won't keep looking, but here's some cheese ones. This is cheese. Like there's literally everything. Cheese wraps. Sierra, I made cheese wraps. I don't even remember doing this, but I did. And here they are. And this mouse is loving the cheese wraps. It's probably like National Cheese Day at some point. And so I, I put I put cheese wraps. Look at the little cheese heart. <laughs> I love it. So lots of fun ways to package your products by using wrap labels. And I send them out every week. And I would love to have you sign up to my email list. Um, just what I needed. Couldn't get that to work. I love to know about the logo wraps. Excellent. Okay, we got some more questions. What is your favorite machine for printing Etsy shipping labels? I use my Dymo because that's all that I have, Paige. It's linked in my, oh, I don't know if it's gonna, oh, oh, we unplugged. It's linked in my, I can't, can you see? 
if you go to a crafty concept.com forward slash Amazon, it will take you to my Amazon storefront and you can go to the shipping essentials te- um, list and you'll see it there. There's another one called Rolo that I tried to get um, and they wouldn't send it to me, but now they probably would. So might want to reach out to them again. I've never had any issues with my Dymo. The Rolo uses um, flat and the Dymo is a roll which is funny. Um, but so the Dymo, I don't have to like set the stack of labels next to the, the Rolo thing, but the Rolo comes in pink. Okay. Um, but I, you can also use regular paper page and you can cut them out and tape them, or you can use shipping label paper to run it through a printer. And I believe I might have a blog post on that. Let me go see. Craftyconcept.com shipping. Hang on. Okay, shipping, I think the one where I talked about shipping inside of, about PayPal shipping, like shipping through PayPal, I believe that one had it, this one. I'll link it, Sierra. I believe it's in this blog post if you want to check that out and get a link to um, the different types of things. I believe it's in that blog post. Um, Okay, now let's go back to the questions. Do you tag wearables with washing instructions? I don't make, well, I do hats. I do hats. So a lot of the patterns that I release have, um, I also have the option for you to get care tags with them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So let's see which ones that I have care tags for. Okay, we have, we have care tags for crafty facial rounds. That tells your customers how to wash them. 100% plush polyester center and quality cotton edging removes most makeup with just washer and dryer safe. There you go. Washer and dryer safe for that one. Then we have the bitty boho bib care tags. And there it's loading slowly but surely. Um, Handmade baby bib. And then you can check this. So you can check which ones that your cotton yarn or whatever yarn you use says. So mine for I love this cotton and dishy cotton, wash on gentle, lay flat to dry. And you say 100% cotton. So you can fill this out. So this is a freebie that you can get if you go to the Bitty Boho Big Bib blog post. You can sign up. So it, if I have a tag available for it, it is available to get for free on the blog post. You can go to my blog post for the pattern and sign up to my email list and it will be sent to you. If you are already on my email list, but you want to grab this freebie, you can sign up again and it will be sent to you. You will not get put in the welcome sequence again. It's just the one time. Um, And then we have, what other ones do we have? I thought I saw a whole bunch of them. Template, what's this one? Hang on, let let me get it open and then I'll share it with you. Those are not care tags. Those are product tags. We have a bunch of product tags too, um, but there are a few. Oh, it wasn't even sharing. Did it not share the whole time? Cool. Cool. Let's try it again. Share this tab. This is the, the Bitty Boho Bib tags. Hand wash only, wash on gentle, tumble dry, lay flat to dry. So you just check, like you print these out, check them with an ink pen or a marker or whatever. I would do a pink marker. if um, I would choose a marker that's on brain for you. I think that could be cute. And then you can write the fiber right here. Sorry, it didn't share. I do that all the time. My Crochet Boss Academy students are like, she does that all the time. And I'm, 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 I'm so sorry. Um, so, yes, if you sell something that has specific washing instructions, I think your ideal customer would really like them. Also, also, I have a YouTube video. I will share my screen in just a second. I will share my screen. I will share my screen. I will not forget. Videos, search, tags. So I have a YouTube video. Share this tab instead. Um, DIY product tags. So if you go find this YouTube video on my blog, I mean, on my YouTube channel, sorry, ignore all these little things is my analytics that I look at. Um, It'll show you exactly how to make your own product tags on Canva. You can also follow this tutorial to make care tags instead of product tags. So instead of putting like what the product information is, you can put the care tag information. Um, But by following this same tutorial, you will be able to do that. It's not sharing. I shared it. I shared it. Ugh. There it is. Sorry. Let me show you what it looked like on the front. Looks like this. DIY product tags. That's what it looks like. You could also use that. Did did the freaking bib ones not share either? Okay, there's the bibs. Check, 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 check. Put the fiber. Ugh. 
so frustrated. Okay, let me just move this to the side. I'm gonna give myself multiple windows. So I stop making mistakes. Okay. No more mistakes for Ashley. Not today. All right. So let's go back to not sharing and let's go back to the questions. Thank you for your question, Denise. Kendi says, Crochet Boss Academy graduate here. How do you keep your Etsy keywords organized? So I, Kendi, I use a, also Kendi, I think I just shouted you out in the, in the group yesterday. Unless there's two, and that is definitely you, Kendi Lehman. I saw it. Great job. So y'all, Kendi is a Crochet Boss Academy student and she just posted on one of our, inside the private Crochet Boss Academy Facebook group, we have a Wednesday celebration post and Kendi posted a paragraph this long of all the hard work she had been doing in her Etsy shop. And she, she definitely understood the assignment for knowledge without action is a waste of time. She got some knowledge from Crochet Boss Academy and then she spent weeks taking action and she revamped her entire Etsy shop, every single listing. She's been retaking photos, doing keyword research. She has been killing it. This is an ideal student right here. This is exactly what I'm looking for inside of Crochet Boss Academy. This is exactly what I want. So way to go, Kendi. Thanks for being here during the live as well. I use a Google Sheet. I use a Google Sheet. Let me see if I can pull it up without um, sharing personal information. I can take a screenshot. Ooh. I don't have any information about that. Hey, Google. No, thank you. Okay, let me try to find it and then I'll share it. I don't understand. Okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to talk to you, my friend. It's okay. So let me, I'm just going to grab a screenshot so it, I don't accidentally share, um, you know, private information. And then I'll share the screenshot with you guys. Um, share. Let me pick the right thing. Window. Where is it? Okay, hang on, hang on. Just a second. I got it. It is coming. Okay, share. Here we go. Here we go. So this is how I organize mine, Kindy. This is how I organize my keywords for Etsy. So for wrap labels, holiday tags and wraps, pumpkin hat pattern. So these are some keywords that I use for my pumpkin hat pattern. These have all been researched. I have another one of these spreadsheets for Pinterest keywords, Kindy. I know that's not inside of Crochet Boss Academy, but if you ever wanted to look into um, Pinterest marketing, I have a separate sheet for Pinterest keywords, but these are how I do, I organize my Etsy listing keywords. And then if I go to make another, like, so this is my Addy Bear keywords, but maybe I make an Addy Bunny and maybe some of these would be good for both. So do a, do a, do, do, do. This is a, another word for lovey, I think not English or like another language, but it was, it showed up a lot. So animal baby blanket, I could use for a bunny one. So it's good to have them saved because you can reuse them for different, um, new products that you will release. Also, it's good because then you can make families like say you've got, look at all these, all these over here. I could group them together in different families because you only get like 120 characters for Etsy listing titles. So you could group them together and use different combos to see which ones do uh, best for you. Thank you for your question, Kendi. And thank you so much for absolutely killing it. And there is probably a, a way to do this even better. If you wanted to, you could also probably use a paid service like E-Rank, e R A N K E rank. Um, Kindy, you could use E rank. We are eight minutes past our dead time, our um, ending time, but I am not, I am not ready to end. So um, I'm going to show you E rank. Let me see if I can get it pulled up. Let me see if I can uh, show it to you without showing any personal information. Just a second. So E rank is a third party Etsy program that helps you with keyword research. I talked about it a little bit inside of Crochet Boss Academy, so you've probably already seen it a little bit, but I'm um, let me just hang on. Let me just look and see what we got going on here. Just a second. Just a second. Hang on. I don't want to show any personal information. Just a second. Let me just because I pay for the for the pro version of E rank and now it's taking forever to load. No, no. Okay, hang on. Just as I don't think I'm gonna be able to share this without hiding my personal information. I wish I had another way to do it. Oh no, I have to figure it out because we just we just talked about it. And I I don't want to um. 
you know, tease and then not show you anything. Okay, let me see if I can do this now. E rank. No, okay. I don't think I'm sharing any information. Oh, that's, that's a lot. Okay, so we're just going to go... I'm going to try to do this without sharing any weird information. It's nerve-wracking, but we'll see. Okay, share, E-rank, here we go. Let me pull these aside so I can make sure I'm sharing the right stuff because that keeps happening. It's aggravating. Okay, so I'm on E-rank.com. I could probably get you an affiliate link for these. Most of these things have affiliate links if you guys want to check it out. But there's also a free version you can check out. But if you go to tools, there's Keyword Explorer where you can look up different keywords. So if I wanted to sell a um, cactus gift pocket, so we're going to say gift card holder. We're going to hit search right here. Okay, these tell me words that have to do with gift card holder. So if you are selling these, you want something with high searches and low competition. So we're going for green across the board is what we want. So high searches, low competition. This gift card holder has a good decent amount of searches, but it has really high competition. So this tells me that it would be very hard to rank for this. Also, also look at this. November is when everybody be searching gift card holder. Keep that in your back pocket for, so like October, if you sell gift card holders, you need to make sure you get them listed and optimized before November 2023 because look at that spike. That is massive. Okay. Um, this one, teacher gift card holder, is green when it comes to competition and it's yellow for searches. So it's not extremely searched. Um, well, look, it's pretty good in April. It went pretty high up in April. So um, this would be a good one. I would use teacher gift card holder. And then you can make an entire listing for this guy marked as teacher gift card holder, um, teacher appreciation gift card holder, a little bit. I mean, it's not great, but it's, it's decent. Um, and that's about all we got because the rest of these have no, none of this. We need search volume. We don't have search volume. It's not helpful. So what if I click on teacher gift holder, gift card holder? Okay. Then we're going to get some new ones and we're going to see. So teacher gift card holder, teacher appreciation gift card holder, Gift card holder, teacher, that's a little weird. Okay, so let's say we like teacher gift card holder. I'm going to star that, maybe. How come it won't let me star it? Did I star it? Okay, I did. So now, tools, keyword lists. It should be on there. I don't use this tool. Uh, default list, okay. One keyword, it should be. Okay, there we go. So, Kinsey, you could use, I don't know um, how much freedom you get with the free version, but they might store your keywords for you if nothing else. So then you could create different types of lists. So you could call this one your your amigurumi list, your plushy list. You could make another one that is your baby bib list, whatever. And then you can open it and save all of your keywords and you can see how they're doing in real time. So if one of them is doing better or worse, you could, you could check that out. You could click on it to get some more, um, but you would be able to save them all in one spot. So that could be really cool. I don't know what this is. List builder, listing builder. I don't know what that is. Um, you can export them and save them as a file, like a CSV file, a spreadsheet. So there's lots of options that you can use in E-Rank. If you wanted to search E-Rank, I would go to YouTube. This is what I would search. I would go to, what is her name? Stella something. I think that's who's, um, I think this is who, uh, Stella Etsy. I think this is who Taylor uses. Okay, so this girl right here, Starla, my bad, my bad. Starla Moore, I'm going to give you her link. Um, let me tell you something, though. I, I have them going to go big. I have not vetted this person, okay? I do not share things with my audience unless I know they are going to serve them well. If someone has negativity in their tone or in their response to their to their audience or if they're coming on complaining about something i do not share them because that is poison and it will poison my community and it will poison my students and so i i go through everybody before i share anything especially a resource like this so there's a couple that she's a couple videos that she shared recently and i watched them fully before sharing it inside of crochet boss academy there was a video that she did about um what was it Kendi, do you remember? There was a video she did recently. Uh, 
is this cheating? It was on, it was on copywriting. It was on copywriting. I can't remember. It was very recent. My, three months ago. Okay, that can't be that long ago. How to use E-Rank for Etsy. Right there, one day ago. Okay, good news. Your Etsy, crucial Etsy rules. This was a lie. This, or always do that. Is it cheap? Maybe it was an old video and it just got reshared. But she had a copywriting video. But I made sure to watch the entire thing before I shared it inside of Crochet Boss Academy because I never want to share negative um, toned people with you guys because it is poison. It will ruin your mental health. It will ruin your business. It will ruin your family. It is poison. So take this with a grain of salt. Salt. But here it comes. Um, there's lots of people coming in. Uh, yeah, yeah, blank, the Despo, it was. It was the copywriting one. It was an older video, apparently, but it was just shared fairly recently. But I watched the whole thing because uh, one of our students went to publish it, and I have to approve every post inside of Crochet Boss Academy's Facebook group, and I watched it before I approved it because I wanted to make sure it was um, it was good. So take it with a grain of salt. Be uh, Have your guard up, right? Guard your heart and guard your mind. And if this is not the the mentor for you, then don't watch it. Find you a different one. It's told there's millions, um, but she does have a bunch of videos on Etsy. She and her husband do this together. They work for E-Rank, which made me nervous at first because I was like, of course, they're going to say E-Rank is a good company because they work there. Um, but Taylor eased my mind about it. She listens to these people regularly. Um, I do not. So grain of salt. Take it as, as you can. But from what I've seen from them, it's been very helpful. Um, sometimes they have a little bit of an attitude-y type tone. Um, some, sometimes they have a little bit of a, of a like not humble tone, I think. I'm very particular about what I share because it, I feel like it's, it's really, really super important. Um, so take it with a grain of salt and put up your, your guards so you know that you can be uh, mentally protected. Okay. I know that sounds super weird, but it's, it's really important to me. Um, okay, we got two more and then we're going to hop off. Do you sell a template to use to create your own? Alicia, I do not sell a template, template, but I have that video. There's a bunch of other um, Canva videos on my channel. I'm going to go back over here and then I'm going to share it again. So we're back to my channel. Oh, fudge. Okay. Okay, and so go to my videos. So we have... This video is very good. Everybody needs to watch this video. Everybody needs to watch this video. This is the most important video on my channel. It only has 800 views. Most important video on my channel. Everybody needs to go watch this one. It's like nine minutes. Um, I have, let's see, that's the printer that I use. I know that I have videos for, for Canvas stuff. So let me find them. Then we've got Crochet Miss. Wait. Closed clear bun beanie. Okay, yarn color chart, yarn color chart template. These are both Canva videos, even if you don't want to make a color chart, but it will help you learn Canva. DIY Lincoln bio page. Oh, look, it was made in my old office. That is also a Canva. I'm going to hide this. Um, that is also a Canva tutorial. So check out these Canva DIY product tags, Canva tutorial. I need to I need to go through and make sure the Canva logo is on all of them. So I need to edit this logo. Sierra, can you make me a note to change this thumbnail to add the Canva logo? Um, that way it's easier for people to see what they need to find. This one is easy product packaging using a sheet of cardstock paper. You can make a whole bunch of stuff from one sheet of cardstock paper. Um, okay, I think that's most of the Canva things. And then if you scroll all the way down, there's some very old stuff in here um, that I use. Look at little baby Theo that I used when I used to make like cardstock boxes and stuff. Actually, I don't think I made any videos for that, but it's on my blog. DIY earring tags. We already talked about that one. Craft show tips. That's a good one. Three years ago. Um... Some of these are so dang old and the SEO is not great. Using Canva for your business. Wow. So that's going to be that's going to be dated. I probably wouldn't look at that one. I mean, you might get some good ideas, but um, Canva has updated a lot since then. It's the best thing. Here we go. DIY cardstock rectangle box. DIY product bags. This is a good one. This is a good one. We're just going to look at it real quick and then we're going to sign off. We want to get to the end so you can see it. I think it's just music. I don't even think I'm talking. 
This was in two, five years ago. It's really fun, though, if it would ever freaking load. Okay, look. So we're making, look at my little chubby hands. We're making product bags out of Atlas sheets. So like maps. And if you, I used to do that. Look at that. Look how cute. I used to do this for all of my markets. I made them all myself ahead of time. I used a, these, these little strings were pieces of mop head that I dyed in crafts class in college that I didn't use because they didn't dry in time. So I ended up using yarn, but these are just strings of like a mop. Like I dyed the head of a mop brown for, for a crafts class. It didn't dry, so I couldn't use it. Anyway, that's what I use for my bag strings. But people at markets were getting my bags when they purchased stuff for me. And then everybody else was like, where's everybody getting these mat bags? So it created um, FOMO and urgency that I never even thought, I never thought of that. I was just trying to get free bags because I didn't want to spend money on bags because I, I was just starting my business. Everything I wanted to do was free. Um, so that's a fun one too. So definitely check that out. I will link it for you down here. But you can find all of them just by clicking on the videos tab. Okay. We got two. I'm getting more excited to focus on my ideal audience. Is it still okay to share crochet friends content on social media like yours? Does that hurt my business? So Paige, if they are your direct competition, you will be sending your customers to another shop. If you're happy doing that, go for it. If you're not happy doing that, maybe don't do that in this part of your business. As your business grows, you might get to where you have all the all the orders you can you can currently manage, and you're happy to send send um, people to a friend. Perfect. Maybe a shop sells something that you don't sell, like maybe you sell baby girl things, and you sell bibs and bags and beanies, bibs, bags, and beanies, and passy clips. But your friend sells cardigans and you do not sell cardigans. You do not want to sell cardigans. You could share her then because that's not direct competition, but she's also serving your ideal customer well. You could also share maybe another company that sells baby onesies, like sewn baby onesies. That would be something that your ideal customer could benefit from seeing, especially if they're on brand, like if they have the same branding as you do, like Boho or whatever. Um, so that's something you think about as well. And the last question is Paige, and she says, my 11-year-old sells her crochet at Summer Farmers Markets. Is it her stuff something I can sell as its own category on Etsy or no, is that not okay? I've been telling her I would do. Yeah, I think so. I mean, double check Etsy's... Um, terms of service you probably have to be 18 to own your shop but you own the shop and I wouldn't put her in her own section per se unless she just sold one type of thing like if she just sold Claire bun beanies you could have a section that said messy bun beanie and they're all there but in the listing I would say um created and you can add so you can add um your daughter as a member of your team on Etsy so share my screen oh I hate that button Okay. Okay. So I'm going to make sure we are good. Okay. So this is my Etsy shop. You can go down and you will see that I have other people. So Ashley, Sierra, and Mackenzie, you can add a shop member. So you could add um, your daughter and then make her as your maker, put her name as maker, and then tell about, tell a little bit about her in the little bio section. And then in your actual listings, over 20 people have this in the shop. Y'all go buy those. Go buy those. If you add her in your actual listing, I mean, in the actual listing description, you could give, say something, say something about her in the actual listing description. You could say, um, each one is hand crocheted by my, each one is hand crocheted by Sierra. She is an 11 year old entrepreneur in the making. Click here to check out more of her story or something if you want to. I wouldn't actually, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't have them click off to from your Etsy listing to something else because that might lead to no sales, right? Um, but you could definitely talk about it regularly inside of your social media postings. Talk about how your daughter also makes and ships like packages up finished things. People are going to love that. People buy things for when they feel emotional. Um, Ava created a sticker. One day when she was sick and home from school or she wasn't feeling good or she was sick or something, she created a, uh, you like my onesie? <laughs> you like my onesie? I love it. She created this little Christmas tree sticker and then I took it and turned it into a graphic design to use for a notebook. And these are available in my Amazon shop. But if you go to the first page, 
It says, my seven-year-old daughter drew the Christmas tree design on the front of this notebook. She sold stickers in my Etsy shop and sold out within 24 hours. I purchased the rights to the art from her and turned it into this fun notebook. If you want to see Ava's journey selling 50 stickers in one day, check out the video on Instagram. Hold your phone camera up to the QR code below and it'll take you straight to it. So if you scan that QR code, it'll take you to the reel of Ava. And then she wrote a handwritten note to everybody and she used it. She wrote it on my iPad so I could um, get the digital version of it. But she said, the art on this notebook was designed by me, Ava. I hope you love it. And then Ava Stallsworth. And then we put a little heart on there. And I put the date for when she actually wrote that. So, yes, kids, people love a good story, Kendi. Or Paige, sorry. So, definitely, um, I would do that 100%. I don't believe it's illegal. Double check with, you know, Taylor or somebody else. Um, I'm not an, I'm not a, a legality person. I am a jump over hurdles as they come person. And then I will also forget where the hurdles are after I jump over them. So it's not, it's not great. Um, let's go back to the chat. You're welcome, Paige. Thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out. Hey, wait now. I'm glad you made it. Love the onesie. Thanks, Kendi. This is from The Simple Seed on Instagram. I asked them if they wanted to collab with me and they ignored me. Uh, fully, but I will still promote them because I love this onesie. Um, the simple C. I'm going to get you a link. Also, you're going to want to size down if you want to get yourself one. These are made for actual babies, but they have adult sizes and they have little feet, little feet coverings, but they are optional. You can have feet or no feet, and then you can have hands or no hands. Perfect for when you are drinking iced coffee or when you are outside letting your dog go pee when it's cold outside. Um, they have ones for the adults with the buttons. The ones with the buttons also has pockets. This one does not have pockets. I have two. I measured for a medium. I bought a small. It was too big. I bought an extra small. It's still a little big. The extra small fits me better, but it's still a little big. So definitely size down from your measurements because they are unbelievably stretchy and it will fit you through body ups and downs. Okay. These things will fit forever. They also have the um, child sizes. Let me see. So here they are. This this is a new one they've got coming out. And I was like, I, I commented, oh, I hope that mushroom one will be in adult sizes. And she said, she said, it absolutely will. So I'm going to be buying that one next because I love them. Um, there's another adult rocking the same one that I'm wearing with her little hands. There, there's a child. Sorry if it makes noise. There we go. Look how cute. One year later. Watch this. Watch how stretchy these. Look at this. She'll probably be able to wear it for next year, too, because it might just like rot up and be little shorts. These things will fit forever. I bought them. I bought one for my best friend's daughter, Addie. I bought one for Ava. We all have the same one. We all have this one right here. That's the small one that I got that was way too big. Um, love this. Love these outfits. I really do. They are super, super comfy, even though the company didn't want to collab with me. Um, Shelly, send me an email to support at Crochet Boss Academy, um, and we can chat about it. Send me an email with a link to your Etsy shop. So she's a Crochet Boss Academy student, so she gets my full attention. Um, so Shelly, send me an email with a link to your Etsy shop and a link to your Instagram, and let me take a look-see, and I'll see what I can find. See what I can find. All right, friends, that is it for today. Thanks for being here. Go tell your fellow makers about Ask Ashley. We need bigger attendance. So it's more of a party. The more conversations we have going, the more questions we have going, the more fun everyone has. So I'm on a pose for a picture and you can post it on Instagram and you can tell them to subscribe to my YouTube channel so they can watch us next week, which will still be Thursday, 10 o'clock PM Eastern Standard Time all throughout the month of May. I will get June, May, June's. I will get June's out soon, but here we go. I'm going to, I'm going to pause for a screenshot. Okay, share that on Instagram. Tell your friends to go, come join, and it will be a fun party here on YouTube together. Thank you for being here. Thanks for asking your questions. Thanks for taking action. Go take action right now. Do something, even if you just write something down. Literally, even if you just write something down, that is taking action. You're telling your brain, hey, brain, when we learn something new, we take action. So your brain's language is behavior. Your brain will, will learn based on your actions. So you need to tell your brain that when we take in information, we take action immediately and then it will become second nature and you will never have to like 
work hard to do that. It'd just be natural for you, a natural trans transition between learning and taking action. So go take action. Have a great day. I will see you next week. Same time, same place. Thanks for being here. Sorry we went over. Bye.